What is going on everybody? So I was spending some time in the Surface Duo Central Facebook group just the other day when I saw this post by Mr. Darren himself showing off his layout for his Surface Duo using Launcher 10. And there were quite a few questions about Launcher 10. How do you use this, so forth and so on. How Launcher, you know, lots of questions. So what I wanted to do here quickly today is I want to make a video showing you how to kind of approximate Darren's layout here for you Windows Phone people that are really missing Windows Phone, that layout. I'm going to show you kind of how to accomplish this a little bit. And I want to say special thanks to Darren for answering a couple of my questions on Twitter about exactly what he was doing here and kind of how he got things to look the way that he did. Very helpful. Thanks a lot. So the first thing you're going to need to do on your Surface Duo is you're going to need to launch the Google Play Store. Go figure. And once you are in the Google Play Store, you're going to simply search for Launcher 10 and then go ahead and install Launcher 10. At this point, once it's installed, when you swipe up to go home, it's going to pop up and ask you, do you want to make this your default launcher? Go ahead and say yes, and the next thing you're going to see is going to look like an absolute disaster. And that disaster will look a bit like this, where you are going to be able to see Microsoft Launcher peeking through from behind Launcher 10, and it's going to look kind of like this, and it's going to look terrible. Here's what you can do. You can do one of two things. One, just reboot your phone if you don't want to tinker with anything. Just reboot, and you'll be fine when you come back. Two, you can go to your settings. You can go to apps and notifications. You can hit see all apps. You can scroll down to Microsoft Launcher, and then hit force stop, OK, and there you go. You are now just looking at Launcher 10. Now, by default, when you look at Launcher 10, it's going to look kind of like this, where you're going to have a list of all apps on the right and then the tile view on the left. Now, I have not really customized this very much, but I'll show you kind of what that process looks like. But the biggest thing that I noticed immediately that Darren did is he had it set up with two pages, which I thought looked fantastic, much better than this perspective. So how do you get there? So if you long press on your home screen, you're going to get this menu pop up here on the right. Click on Launcher Preferences. And then under Start Screen, up here at the top, number of screens, change that from one to two, and that will give you that second screen. I do also want to point out that if this looks really weird, like everything's centered behind the hinge, what you need to do is you need to go back into your launcher preferences, go to general, and under UI type, make sure that is set to foldable split start screens. And then from there, it's a very simple process to long press on any app you want and hit pin to start. And then there you see that little square pop up there. You can then long press on that and hit the little three button thing, which is actually kind of occluded by the bottom of the screen, but I could still reach it. And then you can change the width. Like, let's say, let's go to a four width. So now it's extra wide. And you see now, because I've actually bought the premium version, I am getting a live tile. And if you wanted to do that, let's go back into Launcher Preferences, go back to the main screen, and there's an option here, Live Tiles, and I believe it is $7. And that is right there in the middle of my screen. And what that does is exactly what you think. You're going to get you know, things, information inside that tile. You can see on Instagram there, I've got five notifications, and I can see that someone liked one of my photos. So there you go. And like I said, simple as this, long press, three buttons. You can change the width. You can change the background. You can change the icon. You can do all sorts of cool things. I'm going to make that Twitter wider. You know, you, then you can long press it and drag it around, place it wherever you'd like. Things will sort of reflow to make room for it. You can scroll up and down. So if you, if you add too many things to it, you can actually scroll up and down here. You can add widgets. So long press and hit add widget. Let's add a clock. Well, there, there's your clock. And you can drag this around. Let's say I want the clock up at the top. Let's put it up there at the top. Let's say I don't want that background to be there. Let's hit hide background and then apply. Well, now I've got a clock up there at the top with no widget including it. Let's say I want to get rid of the clock. Let's long press and hit the unpin button on the top right. I'll show you this again here on the calendar. It's right here, top right. You can see that just flashed black right there. Boom. Now it is gone. 
let's put Twitter back to being a normal square. Width to, height to, apply. Now let's drag it back in the middle. It will reflow back up. All of this works relatively well. There are only two problems that I have with this launcher, and hopefully these are things that can be addressed by the developer. Issue number one, let's launch Twitter. Okay, we are in Twitter. Now when I go home, I want to return to the screen you just saw with the two pages and not the all screen thing. When I go home, it will slide over and show me the all apps screen. I do not want it to do that. It does that every time. Even if you're on your home screen and you hit home, you're going to get that screen. I don't want that to be what happens. I can find no way to avoid that. Hopefully that can get fixed. Issue number two, well, you know, again, this may not be a huge problem for you, maybe a huge problem. I don't know. This is up to you. When you go to phone mode, that black flash happens. And when you come back out of phone mode, I'll show you here. Is this the end of the world for you? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But for me, when I go to my home to phone mode, and when I come back out of it, it just feels janky, it feels weird, and I don't like it. Hopefully those two things can get fixed. There's also one more small thing that you may be able to fix in the settings. I've not played around with it too much, but if you look here, you can see if you look close to the hinge, what's on the right screen here, which I guess it's the left screen from where you're facing, um, you can see how the tile is kind of being clipped by the hinge just a little bit. And there are options in here. Let's go back into those preferences, like, start screen and then there's the start screen margin and then there's how you align things center left right i've played with this just a little bit tile margin and i've got it to look better but i can't quite get it to not be clipping into that hinge region and again you may not care at all you may not notice this at all but for me it just looks weird every now and again when i look at it, it bothers me just a little bit i however have obsessive compulsive disorder. <laughs> and so these things bother me more than they may bother you. And just because I feel like people may ask a little bit, let's go back into phone mode and I'll show you here how you can just scroll between your two screens of tiles as well as your all screens, your all app screen, which I keep saying that incorrectly for some reason. And it, I mean, look, it's pretty smooth and it works pretty well. So I looked at this about three, four months ago, something like that. And it had some weird problems where when I would launch an app, it wouldn't know what screen to launch it on. And that stuff seems to be fixed now. And I'm actually having a pretty good experience with it. So if I launch Twitter and then I launch the Play Store, they're going to launch on the screen that I'm actually launching them on. So now Twitter's there and there it is. So earlier on, earlier builds, it didn't seem to know what to do with that. That is working correctly. So I'm hopeful that the weird sliding over automatically thing is also something that they can fix and that the black screen thing is also something that they can fix. But at any rate, guys, I just wanted to show you kind of how that does work. Thanks again to Darren for pointing this out on the Facebook group. So credit to him for kind of showing me this. And hopefully it might make some of you Windows Phone veterans feel a little bit more comfortable on your Surface Duo. So thanks for watching today. Stay tuned for the next videos. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends. <laughs>